to town And if they don't then I won't let it get to me Hello and welcome back to another Reality Check video update review of the FL Sun's complete 3D printer. This is, uh, as I said before, an SLA slash DLP printer, and technically it is a DLP printer. And uh, what makes that different is that, of course, an SLA is stereolithography, which uses a UV laser to etch the image off of mirrors. This is a DLP, which uses digital light projection to put UV lights up onto an actual screen, and that screen then is how it actually creates it, its shape. And doing so, it has a, a 1920 by 1080 resolution, so it can actually get very, very high resolution images. As you can see, you can print some really, really cool things, just like that right there. And uh, the machine is, is extremely proficient at, at creating amazing quality prints. Also in the 3D printing Facebook group, some people mentioned that this is actually a, a, a basically a rebrand of the L2 Micromake 3D printer, which came out earlier last year, and uh, or I guess at the end of last year. But this one right here, the FL Suns Complete you know, printer, uh, it, it really works great. And, and like I said, uh, I, I'm, I'm learning to, to print different things with it. One thing I did, the very first thing I printed with it was this, uh, the, the new Binchy. And, and you'll notice right now, everything looks pretty beautiful on it. We'll take a look at it, but the, the problem was as I was printing it, it ran out of resin because this bottom part used so much resin, I actually ran out and as it was going over the night, you can kind of see what happened to it. It kept building in certain parts, but other areas, because there was no resin in the pool, it just it failed those parts. But uh, had I had enough resin in there the whole time, the entire thing would have printed perfectly. So that right there is uh, what happens when you, when you do not have enough resin in the pool. Uh, of course, we did get the Goku to print out recently, and the Goku is just stunning. He is impressive, really, really cool, and of course I got him to print out. I kept putting more resin in because I did not want to run out of resin with this guy. And as you can see, he looks really, really cool. Um, he's definitely a badass. I found this model on Thingiverse with the supports already ready to go, so uh, it was really, really simple to make him work. And of course, if you're wondering at all about how I got these prints, uh, I used the, the software that came on the USB. You're, you're able to just throw any STL in there, and then you slice it. So if you guys are interested in the process of actually getting an STL to work on this 3D printer, I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so these are the folders that you see when you actually open up the USB, and the creation workshop is what I've used. The control center is something that you can use uh, to control the printer from the internet, and this is actually something that I haven't set up yet, although I do believe it's gonna be pretty easy to do this. I will have to make another video on the internet part of this, I guess, if people are interested, uh, but this is gonna be something where you can just send the prints directly to the printer from here as well as controlling the printer. So uh, I'm gonna get out of the control center real quick. What I use is, like I said, the creation workshop to create my model. So I'm gonna open up the creation workshop right here. This is going to, boom, open it up, and let me make me smaller. Okay, now we have the creation workshop open, and so we can actually go over here to open file, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Goku file, rotate, Okay, so here you can see the model in Creation Workshop, and it'll tell you, as you can kind of see, if I move it out of bounds, the wall turns red, and it gives me a little, a hey, question, you know, a caution, and when you get it in bounds, it works properly. Uh, you can push this button over here to create your own supports, you know, just by hitting these buttons, you can add them yourself, uh, get rid of them, or you can make them automatic by popping this button over here to generate automatic supports. This file already has the supports built onto it, so I don't need to do anything other than just actually slice the file. So for this guy right here, once I make him the right size, I can go into slice, but first you have to save it. And uh, I've already made a big, big Goku, so I wanna make a really tiny Goku and see if, uh, you know, see how that turns out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm going to actually make his size about 50% again. There we go. So now we have three Gokus on there. We're gonna try to print those guys. And in order for me to get this to slice, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna go over here to save and we're gonna save it as three Gokus, and we'll hit desktop, save. And you're not done yet. After you save it, you need to slice it. So then you slice it, and you hit default profile, and I'll show you my profile just in case you wanna see that. If I go into configure, you can see the parameters right here, and the display, of course, is 1920 uh, by 1080, and then I can go into configure slicing profile, and this is the default right here. And, and uh, the bottom exposure is a very important time. Uh, it, it helps that print stay on that plate, and of course you got your exposure time. Uh, the basic way that this printer works is that you can 
you can tell it to stay with the light on a little longer before it goes up. And also you don't want it to go up too fast because if it goes up too fast, then it might pull the supports down with it. So you want it to go up at a certain speed that's just right. Uh, once it goes up, it basically has to go back down, but it can't go up and back down too fast because you have to have the resin pool to go back down and you know actually cover up the spot. So uh, there's a lot of things that are involved in here. And, and, and we're gonna go ahead and hit the slice button over here. We'll hit 3D view and then hit the we'll get slice view. Hit slice and hit slice, all right. All right, so right now it's actually slicing. Once this file is done, uh, that file that we previously saved, you can't save it yet. It's actually gonna be taking all this data. Once it saves all these slices, these photos of each little in-between spot, it's gonna put that all into that one file. You can take your CWS file, put it onto your memory card, and then we're gonna put that memory card back into the printer. All right, get your gloves on, here we go. You gotta make sure you're wearing gloves when you're playing with the resin because the resin is carcinogenic. Or car carcinogenic, it's poison, whatever. Um, as you can see here, this is a wash resin, so you can actually just wash it with water and stuff. Okay, anyway, so over here, when you first start, it's got the auto leveling that it wants you to do. I'm actually not gonna want to auto level it, so hold on one second. I'm actually very confident that the level is where it needs to be. So first, I'm going to actually unscrew this piece because I'm gonna have to take this spot off. And before I pull this guy out, because I'm just gonna go ahead and go look down here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Normally this is gonna bring the entire piece down to come down into the plate to level it. But since, like I said, I'm already ready and I know it's level, I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And then I'm gonna go into this option right here and go to emergency stop. And that's gonna stop it from coming down and squashing itself. Also, down here, um, you also wanna make sure to hit this button where it says auto home. You wanna make sure that it actually does not have an X on it because otherwise it just starts printing with the plate up in the air and you want it to start with the plate coming down when it starts to print. So the best way to have it come down automatically is to make sure you hit that auto print button. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna go to the folder and go into the SD card and it says three Gokus, just like we had earlier. I'm gonna hit that three Gokus and I'm gonna hit select. And now you can see up at the top, it says three Gokus. And all I have to do right now is hit the start button and it's gonna be ready to print. So as soon as I hit start, all right, so you're gonna to wanna to pull this plate off that has the resin inside. And I actually, you can keep the resin inside just like that as long as you keep it covered and don't have the light exposed to it like I do right now. So this is only gonna be for a temporary moment. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button to start printing it and then I'm gonna cover it up and then we will see what we have with the, uh, the actual Gokus on there. All right, so that's the end of this update video. You can do a lot with this SLA slash DLP printer. Uh, I'm really, really excited to continue learning more about it. I've almost run out of resin, so I need to purchase some more of that. And uh, if you guys are interested about this printer, or want to know more, check out the description for some links. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.